In this section, we'll look at the imperialism of Roosevelt's one-term successor, William Howard Taft. Now, when Roosevelt left office early in 1909, after the 1908 election, Taft didn't directly intervene in world affairs to the extent that Roosevelt had. But Taft did famously expand American economic interests in the Caribbean, something, of course, that Roosevelt would have encouraged. In what became known as dollar diplomacy, the United States paid back the debts the Central and South American countries had to their old European colonial masters. While the Central and South American countries were granted lower interest rates, it also meant that the U.S. was now their creditor. And being a creditor, you know, being owed money, is leverage. The United States began to use this banking and economic leverage as justification to intervene in Latin America. Dollar diplomacy thus raised the stakes of American imperialism in the Caribbean. It was another form of American imperialism. There was one notable exception uh, in, in the Caribbean in which uh, Taft did send in actual troops, and, and that was Nicaragua. When the N Nicaraguan dictator, Jose Zelaya, threatened to move against American mining interest in his country, the Taft administration uh, helped uh, sort of stage his overthrow. In 1911, it established a, a pro-American president, Adolfo Diaz. America then began to establish American control of Nicaragua's banking and customs. When the Nicaraguan people, upset with Diaz for allowing all this, then revolted against Diaz, Taft sent in 2,700 Marines to suppress the uprising. In the end, the Marines had to occupy the country for many years because the anti-American sentiment sort of remained very high. Certainly, Taft worked to extend dollar diplomacy to Asia and supported the participation of uh, American bankers in an international consortium of European bankers, uh, which was to build a, a, a big railroad across central and southern China in 1911. The project never prospered, however, and, and when Woodrow Wilson took over in 1913, he, he forced the withdrawal of the American banking group. Now, while in the strictest sense during Taft's administration, dollar diplomacy meant paying off the loans of Central and South American nations to their old colonial masters, uh, a way, therefore, to make the U.S. the creditor with leverage, dollar diplomacy was really just one example of economic imperialism. I, I want you to be aware of economic imperialism. One could use money as control easier than, you know, one could use arms. In a free market economy, the nation with the largest economy has more leverage. And since it buys more and sells more, it can use the threat of not trading as leverage to get the other smaller nation to do something. For this reason, many people believe the United States today, with its massive economy, promotes free trade to advance its own imperialist economic agenda. This concludes the uh, section on the brief section on uh, William Howard Taft's economic imperialism.